Hi, everyone. So we are back. Again, I'm Miss Jen from Codespeak Labs, and we're going to do the code part of our worm composting project now. Okay, so we're going to start with our worm. So as you recall, what we need to do is make the worm move around based on the player pressing the arrow keys. So there's actually more than one way to code this. So if you're an experienced coder, you can see if you can figure out a different way than what I'm doing. Um, but first we start off with our most common starting block, which is a yellow events block. So I click on events on this left-hand side with all the color categories. And I'm gonna pull out when green flag clicked. So this is gonna start off our game. Now I wanna figure out um, where the worm is going to appear in the beginning. So I like having it just start in the middle of the screen, um, but you can decide if there's a better starting point you prefer. And the way that we determine location is by using a block in the blue section of motion called go to XY. XY are the coordinates that tell us where something is. So I'm gonna turn it to zero, zero, so when I press this green flag, I test my code by pressing this, and it goes right to the middle. So notice if I drag my worm away, every time I press the green flag, bloop, it'll go right back to the center, zero, zero. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is to code one of the arrows. So I want the arrow to always be activated. And for the computer to always be listening, they say, oh, are you, are you pressing that, that arrow key? So I'm going to use a forever block. Now, the forever block is very special. It has a big mouth. So if you go in this dark orange section called control, you look at the forever block, which is the third one down. Looks like it's an alligator wanting to eat something. And now within the forever block, whatever you put inside will repeat forever during the game. So forever, I want to the computer to say, huh, if the arrow key is pressed, then do blah, blah, blah. So now I'm gonna use another alligator block and put it inside the forever loop. If blank, then. So that's a conditional. It's gonna say, if the arrow key is pressed, then what? But I need to fill in this little hexagon shape. So I'm gonna go to the, the light blue sensing block. And I'm gonna say, if key pressed, you'll notice the block is in the shape of a hexagon. So it fits exactly in the shape that is in the whole of the hexagon. You'll notice if I try to come at it from the left, it doesn't work. So I need to whoop, go over to the right, sneak in that way. And then when it's highlighted white, I can drop it. So it says if space press, but I actually want the up arrow. So again, there's a drop down menu with this that gives you the arrow options. So then I say if key up arrow pressed. And remember, if you need a little more time to do this code, you can pause the video at any time to help make sure that you are in the right track and, and your classmates are as well. Okay, so what do I want to happen when I press the up arrow? Well, there's a really cool block in the blue motion section called point in direction. So I'm gonna bring that over. I'm gonna put it inside this block. So point in direction is really cool because when you click on this number, it'll tell you, whoa. which direction each number means the spread will go. So I want it to go all the way up when the arrow key, when the up arrow key is pressed up. And then let's say we're going to then move. So this is the first block. We're gonna move, let's say four steps. If you want your worm to move faster, you can make this number bigger. Okay, so now let's check our code. I'm gonna press the green flag. Nothing happens because it's already at zero, zero. 
But when I press the up arrow key, it points up and it moves up. Oh, well now I'm stuck. I can't go down. <laughs> so how do I go down? Okay, so I'm gonna teach a shortcut. So now that I've done the code for the up arrow, I can actually duplicate it to do the other arrows. Save me a little bit of time. So I'm gonna right click here and then click duplicate. Then I get, whoa, a direct copy of that code. And I'm gonna actually stack it on top of each other. Now, if you have, um, so just watch, don't, don't do this. I'm gonna demonstrate a potential problem. Let's say you accidentally put it inside. So let's say you have the if inside another if. You can just click on that if, the first block of the ones you have to pull out, and then move back down. So you want them to be stacked on top of each other. So if up arrow key press, then put in direction zero, moves four steps. So now I have to change this to down arrow. And when I go to point and direction, I'm just gonna point the arrow all the way down so it knows that it should be pointing in the one in degree direction. Oop. So now the worm moves down. And now I can move up and I can move down. Pretty awesome. And I have a guess that you know what's coming next. I need to go left and right. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, which is right click to duplicate. Then I'm gonna drop it below so it stacks. And I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it again because I know there's four arrow directions I want. So there's gonna be four stack sets. I want up, I want down, and then I want left and I want right. So to go left, I'm gonna point in direction of, ooh, you guessed it, left, which ends up being negative nine. Then this one, I'm gonna go right. And I'm gonna drag it, which ends up being positive 90. Then I'm gonna check my code. So in order to check your code yet, you gotta move the arrow keys. Ooh. Pretty cool. If you have any issue where there's a direction that's not working, just carefully debug your code to make sure it matches this. You wanna make sure you have an if area for each arrow. So you should have four stacked arrows there. Now that is the code we're gonna put on the worm. So now we're gonna do the apple. But again, you can pause the video here if you wanna just stop and review your code for the worm. Okay. To switch to the apple, I'm just gonna go in the sprites area. I'm gonna click on the apple core. You'll notice, oh, it looks like my code disappeared. But that's because you don't have any code on the apple yet. When you go back to the worm, you'll see your code again. Okay. So for the apple, I'm gonna start with that same block we started with for the worm. So we go to events, when green flag clicked. So we want, the player to feel a boost of, yay, whenever the worm gets an apple. So we're gonna do that by actually giving the player a point. The way that we store points in video games is by using variables. So a variable is in the section called variables. So it's on the second to the bottom section. It's a dark, dark orange. And if you don't have a score variable yet, you just click make a variable and you type in score, S-C-O-R-E. So mine already has it, so that's why it says it already exists and it'll appear here. If the box next to score is unchecked, the score board on your game will go away. But if you check it, it will stay. 
I like to keep it there so players know how many points they have and how close they are to winning. So now, when you go to this variable section, you can actually set your variable to a certain number. So I want my game to start at zero, which is pretty typical. So I'm gonna set, instead of my variable, we're gonna choose from the menu, score. So you'll notice it says score zero, because at the beginning of the game, you always want to score zero. Now, I want my apple to actually appear at different random places, keep the game interesting so you don't know what to expect, and the worm will then chase after it. So I need to go to motion. I need to go to random position. This is the fourth block of the motion blocks. So let's check if our code works. I'm gonna press the green flag. It goes to random position. Every time I click the green flag, it goes somewhere else. So it's working. Now I wanna do another forever loop, which was in the control section. This is one of the special ones that look like a mouth. And again, I'm gonna put an if block, which also has a mouth, inside the forever block again, except the apple, instead of waiting to sense a key, it's going to wait to sense touching. The way that it waits to sense touching is by going to sensing. This is another hexagon block. I'm gonna go over to the right and I'm gonna drop it here. I'm gonna change it to if touching worm. So that's how we tell the computer the worm is eating the apple core because the two sprites are actually touching. Okay, if touching worm then, then we want it to make it keep chasing. So it's eaten one apple. So we're gonna pretend like another apple core has appeared. So we're gonna to go to random position. And of course we gotta give them a point. So we go to variables. And this time, instead of setting it, we have to change score by one. So I drag change, and I go to score, and go by one. So if you check your code and the apple appears like it's moving around the screen after you eat it, and if your score is going up one, then it's working. If you have a bug, if there's a problem, no worries at all. Bugs are a perfect opportunity to learn. Um, one common error is putting set score instead of change score um, in the if block. So make sure it says change score so it's going up. Another issue is if you accidentally have a wrong sensing block. So if touching worm, if you leave it at mouse pointer, it won't work or if you accidentally put in key pressed. So if you need more time, you can go ahead and pause the video here and review your code for the Apple Core and make sure it matches mine. Okay, so lastly, we're gonna do our end state, which is basically controlled by the composting symbol. You can design this yourself, or you can make a different uh, sprite, or you can have your worm talk, it's really up to you since you're the game designer. So I'm gonna have the composting symbol appear at the end of the game. Okay, so I'm start with the same block I usually do with events when green flag clicked. Blow that up bigger. So at the beginning of the game, the composting sign is actually hidden. So I'm gonna go under looks, which is the purple category. And there's a hide block at the bottom. It's one of the smallest blocks, high. And then I'm gonna use my favorite combo for this game, a forever block and then an if block inside of it. So I'm gonna go forever. Again, it's under control, forever, and then the if block inside of it. Now, if you accidentally put your forever block inside your if, no worries, just drag it out and put it. Or if you accidentally choose the wrong block, like if then else, we're not using that today, even though it's a very helpful block for other games, you can just drag it back over here, make it go away. Okay, so now I want a special condition where I'm not just listening for a key press, I'm not just listening for touching, I'm listening for 
if the score is a certain number. So in mind game, I'm gonna make it 10. But if you want it to be a really hard game, you can make it 100. If you wanna make it a really easy game, you can make it two. It's really up to you. And you can imagine if you wanted to build out the game, you could actually just make this a level and hitting a certain score means you're, oh, now it's on to the next level. But for this example, we're gonna make the game end when the score equals 10. So I have to use my first green block. So I'm gonna pick a hexagon shape that is the equal sign. Okay, so it's over here. There's three hexagons in a group, greater than, less than, and I want equals. I'm bring it over here, drop it in here. So there's a space here where I need to put in my score variable. So I'm gonna click in variable and drop in score. And so by default, it says 50, but again, that would be a, a pretty long game. So I'm gonna change mine to 10. And then when I get 10, I wanna show. So show is just the opposite of hide, same section. That's the purple section. I'm gonna click show. And then I'm gonna just say a message. You can have it say whatever you want. Um, I'm going to use the save block. Again, it's under looks because it's not a sound because you're not saying it out loud. You're just gonna see the text. If you do wanna add a sound later though, you can do that. So I'm gonna change my message to woohoo. Great job composting. You can do any appropriate message that you want. Like one. So let's see what happens. So in order to see if this works, I actually have to <laughs> play to score 10. So let's go ahead and play, move in. One more, next one should be 10. Ooh, great job composting, my happy worm. So you notice I could stop the code so that the worm and the apple go away, but I think it's kind of cute, so I'm just gonna leave it hanging out here. But this is how I know I won. I say, woohoo, great job composting. So that is the end of the example project. And you can pause here if you wanna double check your composting code. If you have more time and you wanna make a more advanced project, you can do things like animate your worm so it changes costumes when it moves. You can add different types of food scraps to actually educate people on what you could put into a worm bin. So for example, banana peel, maybe you wanna make that worth two points. You can also put in things that don't belong, like plastics so or other things that are not compostable. And then maybe there's a negative point if you accidentally touch it. Maybe there's a button where you can actually remove that bad stuff from the compost bin. So it's really up to you. Thank you so much for composting and coding with me today. Bye everyone.